Welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Booth Makeover. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about this noisy rack of gear that is sitting next to me right now. A lot of important things happen here. This is where we have our video hub, we have a video switcher, and then we have a video encoder, and then we have a video recorder. So four very important pieces of gear back here, and actually some other pieces of gear too, but really four important ones. So this rack of gear is located in our front of house tech booth. It's not backstage, and it's located kind of in the back of the tech booth here uh, where the, the door is to get inside the tech booth. In this video, I'll talk about why these pieces of gear are pretty essential if you want a robust, professional multi-camera live streaming setup. And I'll also talk quite a bit about Resi. Resi is our encoding and multi-streaming platform software service that we use. And there's a lot of things I love about it. There's a couple things I don't like about it. I'll share it all by the end of this video. This video is brought to you by our advanced multi-camera live streaming for churches online course. You'll see it linked down below in the description of this video. I don't know about you, but when I dove into this type of system for the first time, it was incredibly overwhelming understanding how video switching works, how video routing works, how encoding works, um, all of this fancy smancy stuff you have to understand if you're gonna go with an all hardware setup like this. So we cover it all within the course. We cover advanced camera setups for church live streaming, and then we dive into each one of these pieces of gear um, very much in depth, and we, we cover all of the quirks and the, and the roadblocks that you may face in setting this up for yourself. So check out the course and enroll today. So let's just kind of walk through the video signal flow of what's happening back here. So every single camera and any other video source that we have within this worship center here, it's gonna come back to this rack. So whether the camera is in the back of the room, on a tripod, on the stage, wherever, it's an SDI run, um, which is ideal for long video runs. It runs all the way back into this rack right here. And if it's just a plain old live action camera and it only needs to be sent into our switcher, well, in that case, it's gonna go straight to our switcher, which is the Production Studio 4K. That's what we have here. It's by Blackmagic. It has eight camera inputs. And it could be other video inputs besides cameras. We have our video inputs coming from ProPresenter directly into the switcher as well. Right above the video switcher, we have the Smart Video Hub Clean Switch 12 by 12. So it has 12 inputs of video that you can route to any one of the 12 outputs uh, over SDI. So this is really great. Uh, in our case, we want to take you know one video feed, let's say our program out from our video switcher, we want to send it to multiple destinations. We want to send it both to our recorder here, um, the HyperDeck, and then we also want to send it to our encoder to be live streamed. And then maybe we also want to send our program feed to our lobby TVs so people out in the lobby can see what's going on in the service. We send them the same, the same program feed that you would see online. You can also route additional auxiliary feeds straight out of your video switcher. So Video Hub isn't always 100% necessary, but as you start working with more video sources and you have more video destinations, it's definitely going to come in handy um, when you just want to get different video feeds to different places within your church or to your live stream. So our video switcher, the A10 Production Studio 4K, that's doing all the work to actually produce that program feed to send to our live stream. So it takes the camera feeds, it overlays any images or videos or lower thirds lyrics for our congregation online. To Out of the multi-view output on the back of the switcher, we're sending an SDI cable to the tech booth where our workstations are, and then from there we just have a four-way uh, splitter that's sending um, different feeds to different multi-view screens for our tech team. And then from the back of the switcher, we're sending our program output to the video hub where it can then be distributed to various destinations around the church. And it also can be distributed to our HyperDeck mini recorder here. So this is going to capture a local recording of the worship service and we like to use this as a kind of a backup recording which it can come in handy it came in handy last sunday i'll tell you more about that but there's an sd card slot here there's actually two of them we have a 128 gigabyte uh, sd card we put in here and we're recording to the h.264 codec which is a compressed uh, video format that's easy for sharing uh, media online it can also do 
ProRes, but that's, it's, it's overkill for what we need and it's very large files. So we just go with H.264 files with our HyperDeck uh, local recording. Then over here, we have the Resi Ray encoder. So this is a small little Intel Nuke, Nuk, I never know which way to pronounce that, uh, computer. It's a little computer and it has um, no monitor or keyboard attached to it. It's really just the computer itself. They put a little HDMI monitor emulator uh, in the back of it there. And all it needs is power and an ethernet connection to your network. And then it also needs uh, the SDI uh, input coming from your video switcher or hub to get your program feed or whatever you wanna stream into the computer into the Ray encoder. So the Ray encoder it has built into it that the team at Resi, when they send it to you, they put a little SDI video capture device um, in it. So you don't have to install anything. You really just plug it into power, ethernet, and your program feed over SDI, and then it's ready to configure. So those are the primary pieces of gear we have back here. Let's review one more time what they're all doing. We have the video hub, which is for video routing purposes. We have the video switcher, which produces our final program feed and cutting video, overlaying lyrics and graphics. Then we have the HyperDeck Mini, which takes the program feed from the switcher and it will record it to an SD card as a backup. And then we have our Resi Ray encoder, which is encoding the program feed and then sending it to the Resi Cloud platform, where it is then multi-streamed to various destinations. Why would you want to go and spend a ton of money on this type of system when you could just use something like ProPresenter to do all of your church uh, live streaming? Well, for me, it's, it's more about just having a more solid, robust setup that also has a bit more redundancy built into it. When you're using software-only streaming solutions, whether it's ProPresenter, OBS, Ecamm Live, vMix, if something happens to that one computer that's running all that, or running that software program, you could easily just completely lose your stream um, and you're, you're gonna be out of luck there and maybe you'll even lose any backup recording solution. But with a hardware environment like this, there, there would have to be multiple things to fail simultaneously for you to completely lose um, everything for your church's Sunday stream. And I'm speaking out of experience here. So this, this previous Sunday, um, we were streaming as normal. Nothing really changed with this setup, but we began experiencing some signal loss issues going into our Resi Ray encoder. And this is one of the things that I don't really like about Resi's encoding process here. And I don't know if they can change this, if, if, if it's just the physics of encoding and the, how all that stuff works. Um, but when it gets a, a, a blip in the video signal from your switcher or maybe from your video hub, it actually really messes up the, the sync between video and audio going into the encoder and then being sent online. So on Sunday morning during our first service when we were, you know, we actually don't stream publicly the first service, but we still have a Resi event happen. So it's a good way to kind of test to make sure everything's working okay. During the first service, I got notifications from Resi saying, hey, you're losing signal. It's gonna create major audio and video sync issues. And of course it was when I was looking at the web event in Resi, um, the, the video was way behind the audio and it looked horrible. And I'm like, oh no, like, but fortunately I have time to try to troubleshoot this before our second service. So I did try to do that. Um, and the, the only thing I could think of uh, immediately was the uh, just changing out the SDI cable that was supplying the video feed to the um, Ray encoder. And, and the thing is, like our, our video going into our HyperDeck was fine. So I, I was just having a hard time kind of understanding where in this where this problem was coming from. And eventually, we were able to spend some more time after the service troubleshooting things. Where I actually think this video hub was the culprit in the way we were routing cameras into the video hub and then to the switcher. Um, not not 100% uh, solved uh, with this situation, but I did I did get it reconfigured. I ran tests with Resi, and now it seems to be working fine. Uh, but anyways, long story short, uh, the Resi was not getting a solid signal from our switcher, and it was getting out of sync, and it was pretty much unusable. So I thought I'd solved it with a new SDI cable by the second service, but I was leading worship during the second service. Um, and it, the problem started to happen again. And it was one of those deals where I'm like, well, do I restart the Resi stream? That's gonna kind of mess up the stream. It, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, in the end, we just left the stream up. It, the, the audio was gonna way ahead of the video. 
and um, and then shortly after the service, I was able to grab our local recording in our HyperDeck Mini, and then we just uploaded that to YouTube. Everything was in sync, everything was fine, and then we just took down the actual stream. So that's a scenario where it was really nice to have a local recording captured with our HyperDeck um, when our encoding process failed on us. And I'll say I think this more has to do with our setup causing issues with our encoder more than it has to do with the encoder uh, itself. I don't know, again, like I wish this was something that maybe Resi could figure out, like if it was getting um, any drops in video signal, like why does it have to get out of sync? Is there something they could change about the way they do that? Where, you know, if it drops out, maybe it just drops out, but it's still going to be in sync. Uh, because again, the, the video and audio were perfectly in sync in the switcher. It was just getting out of sync with the actual encoder. So team from Resi, if you're watching this, it'd be cool if you guys could figure out a different solution there. Meanwhile, I'll, I'll figure out how to not have our video signal drop out being sent into the encoder. But I've been using Resi for about 12 months now. I used that at Mission Lakewood. We've been using it for about two months here at uh, South Fellowship Church. And this was really the first time I had a major uh, Resi headache on a Sunday morning that I couldn't quickly troubleshoot. I want to talk a little bit more about Resi, specifically from the software and multi-streaming standpoint, because I know a lot of people are out there wondering, why would I want to spend 150 bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, whatever their pricing plan is, whichever one you choose, like it's not cheap. It's, it's multiple thousands of dollars over the course of a year. Why would you want to spend it? I think it's worth it. I want to talk a little bit more about that, but let's take a look at the actual back end or the, the cloud software um, aspect of Resi, just so you can kind of understand the conveniences uh, that come with this program. So here we are in the Resi control software. So this is all cloud-based. You just pull up the URL, you log into your Resi account, and then this is where you can actually control your encoder to turn it on or off. You can create web events. Um, so this is when the encoder will start you know, producing an event that you can then watch from the platform here, or you can then send that event to different social platforms. So let's just start about what I don't really like about Resi software after using it for almost a year now. I just think the, the UI or the user interface, the user experience is, is, is pretty poor. Like it's just not, it's just not that intuitive. Um, especially at first, like when I tried to get this going at first, I was just like super confused and I didn't really understand it until just a bunch of trial and error. And I did watch like the Resi onboarding material and things like that. And again, it just like still wasn't super helpful. It was just like, it, it was just like, okay, encoder events and encoder profiles and like, what the heck does this all mean? So Resi team, if you're listening, most of the people who are trying to use your product are worship leaders, not IT people. Um, and it's just intimidating when you try to use this stuff. So I would just try to make it fancier because it, in essence, what Resi is doing, once you understand it, it's not that complicated. Like it's actually a pretty simple idea. Like you're sending video to the encoder and when the encoder's on, it's gonna start you know, producing the video in the cloud for you to watch what's happening from your program feed. Um, and then you can decide like, where do I wanna send this? And at what time do I wanna send it to my live stream? Um, so there's lots of cool things you, could, you can do from it. Um, I just feel like this was, you know, it was developed by engineers, not, not designers who just understand good UI and making things more user friendly. So I love the guys at Resi. I would, I would still work on this and improve this, please. So here's our encoder that we have, and this is the profile. So that means the, the video that needs to be sent into the encoder is 1080p, 24 frames per second, five megabits per second, and H.264, and then two channels of audio. And then here is probably the best feature of Resi, and this is the automated scheduling of your live stream. All right, so let's take a look at our schedule here, which is gonna be Sunday, May the 16th. So this is a schedule that we started back on March 28th of 2021. It repeats every seven days. So you can see we have two web events. So what happens is the encoder is going to turn on um, at 8.25 a.m. in the morning. That's about 35 minutes before our service start time. The encoder will turn on um, but it's not gonna send video anywhere. It's not gonna create a web event. It's just gonna be on. And then what's gonna happen over the course of Sunday morning is there's gonna be two web events. The first event is just labeled first service right here. Happens from 8.45 to 10.20 a.m. And it's one hour and 35 minutes long. And this one is, we created an event profile um, basically called 
not streaming. Like basically like it's not streaming to public destinations like Facebook or YouTube. This is just going to be streamed uh, in Resi's cloud platform to a private uh, embed code and, and nobody is going to uh, see that. And this is our cloud backup recording of our first service. So we record our first service both in Resi as well as at our HyperDeck Mini. So we have two recordings. One of the reasons I really like doing this as a worship leader or a production director is our first service could be going on. Let's say we do the first set as a worship band, the, the sermon starts, then I as a worship leader can go back into my office and I can pull up the Resi event and I can listen back to the mix and watch the video from that first set of the worship of the first worship service um, and then I can come over here and just give my broadcast guys video and audio any feedback anything that I'm seeing or hearing that I want change so this is really convenient as a worship leader to pretty much immediately um, just get a sense of, of where our stream quality is going to be at this was also where this past weekend I was able to discover oh there's like there's issues going on with audio and video syncing with Resi and at least I was able to attempt to try to resolve that but I failed. Okay so that's the first service web event. It is private. It's not being sent to the public. Then we have another web event at 1028 a.m. So this is about 16, 17 minutes before our 1045 service and this is the one that gets sent to the public to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously and we also take this uh, event profile embed code and we put it on the church online platform so someone can watch it on the church online platform separate from any social media accounts. So you can see that these web events have automatic start and end times. If the service ends earlier than usual, I can go ahead and manually just stop the web event so it'll stop streaming to our social accounts. Um, and meanwhile, the encoder will just stay on though until 12.30 p.m. It'll just shut off by itself. So to me, the scheduling feature is probably one of the best benefits of Resi because nobody on our team has to worry about, oh, did I press live at this time or that time? The only thing we need to worry about is make sure by 1028 AM before you know the stream goes live that we have our countdown video up or scrolling announcements up um, and that we're good to go. We just don't want to be caught off guard with you know having some random camera to our program feed uh, being sent to the stream at the beginning of the stream. And then the other thing I really like about it, again, is that flexibility for me as a worship ministry leader to just quickly review the service and how it's looking, how it's sounding online uh, before anybody else will end up seeing it online. And part of that, too, is because we're you know choosing to stream our second service on Sunday rather than our first service, which also gives us more time to like practice and really uh, dial things in before the second service. And then of course the other big thing I love about Resi is just the encoding quality. Um, the actual video and audio that you're going to see and hear online is just better than any other streaming platform that I used, especially a lot of like software based streaming uh, solutions uh, because they tend to just really have to crunch the video and it deteriorates the, the video and the audio quality of your stream. And it's kind of a bummer if you're working really hard to make it look good and sound good and then your streaming software has to you know, crunch it down and, and, and deteriorate the quality of that uh, before your online viewers can enjoy it. So Resi, it doesn't do that. It's got its resilient streaming protocol. Um, that's the other thing I love about it too is that it's on a 90 second delay to the um, final destination on the social platforms so that if there's any blip in internet service or anything like that, um, people on the other end won't see any buffering. Um, they, they, they never really experience buffering because of that, whether there's an internet outage um, or if you know there's just a not a solid connection between um, our church and you know however it's getting to the end user uh, online. So I do love the resilient streaming protocol. So for all of these things, I really do think Resi is worth it. It's very convenient, automated, high quality, um, that we're paying about $200 a month here at South Fellowship Church. It's pricey, but then again, when you're, when you're creating infrastructure for a whole online campus that dozens, perhaps hundreds or thousands of people at your church depend on, it's actually a pretty reasonable price to pay. And my only th beef with Resi is that I think it could use a better UI. Um, so I don't know if talk to whoever's of the web developers on your team, just like make it a little bit more intuitive, 
maybe add in some some better like support videos and articles on how this stuff all works and, and, and assume in your support and training materials, assume that nobody knows anything about anything <laughs> when you make these articles. That's kind of how I make my courses for Churchfront. Um, and that's why like, we even have a course that covers Resi stuff because I assume nobody knows anything about video codecs and audio channels and uh, encoder profiles and all that jargon. So you guys can make that better for your support side of this. Um, and then if you can find a way where like, okay, if there is a video signal glitch going to the encoder, if there's a way to make it so it doesn't get audio and video out of sync. Probably there isn't a way, you guys probably would like, it probably wouldn't be an issue at all um, if, if that's something that could have been solved, but it would have been great because like, again, I know it's our fault that we had a glitched out signal going to, um, our, from our video switcher into the Ray encoder, uh, but it was a pain because like we just had no time to troubleshoot that on Sunday. It was also very strange because we hadn't had that problem at all in the previous week, so super confusing. It is what it is. Um, but all that said, I really do appreciate Resi. I think it's worth it. I think you guys should give it a try. So just go to the website, chat with the sales team, um, and they'll let you know if it's a good fit and which plan would make sense for your church. So that's it, guys. That concludes this walkthrough of our tech booth setup concerning our video switching, routing, recording, and encoding solution. If you found this helpful or inspiring for your own church's setup, please leave a like on the video leave a comment, share it with your friends, share it with your mom, and uh, I'll see you next time.